Welcome. Uh, I'd like to cover a topic that's a frequently asked question in the training program, and that is how, when you're the leader, do you actually do the leadership role and facilitation of your team at the same time? It's a challenging question, and it's a balancing act. And I have three guidelines or three tips to share about how to do this joint role more effectively. The first guideline is when you as the leader from a particular topic that you're going to bring to your team, you need to be emotionally detached from the particular strategy. You're attached to the outcome, but you need to be somewhat detached. If you can't be detached, then that's a time when you need to bring in either somebody else from the outside to facilitate or another member of the team who is more detached than you are. So that's tip number one or guideline number one. Guideline number two is, again, understanding that teams often feel manipulated when the leader is actually facilitating the conversation. They feel manipulated in that you're trying to guide them to your answer. That's when I actually suggest that every leader brings the team a set of parameters. Their guidelines or boundaries within which the team can come up with their own idea and own it, but they can't stray from outside of those guidelines. And the analogy that I use is called the Golden Gate Bridge story. And in this story, and everybody's either driven across the Golden Gate Bridge or a large bridge in your state or your country, the Golden Gate Bridge has five lanes of traffic, three lanes going in one direction, two lanes going in the other. It also has, around those lanes of traffic, it has an inside wall or boundary, and then sidewalks on the outside, and then the very edge of the bridge, it has another barrier. So I ask people, well, how fast do you drive across this bridge? Knowing that the speed limit's 45, some people will say as fast as I possibly can. Other people say, I just go exactly the speed limit. Some people drive on the inside lane. Some people drive in the middle or the outside lane, all for different reasons. Then I ask people, imagine if we removed the inside boundaries, the sidewalks, and the outside boundaries of the bridge, and all you have is five lanes of traffic suspended out over this huge span of water. And I asked them, now how fast would you drive and in what lane would you drive? Some people go, I wouldn't dare cross the bridge. Other people say, I'd drive as slow as possible right down the middle of the bridge. The point is, not having those boundaries, those parameters, those guidelines, actually creates a sense of concern and fear for people and they tend to drive right down the middle of the bridge. We don't want that for our teams. By providing the boundaries, the guidelines, the leader, saying here's what's in the conversation, here's what doesn't fit in that conversation, here's the budget for this possible solution, whatever those boundaries are, then people can drive creatively across that bridge or across the work that you've set for them. That's guideline number two. Guideline number three is a very simple one. And that is, you need to have an agreement with your team about when you, as the leader, who is also facilitating, actually can contribute to the conversation. And the suggestion is, is that you don't contribute until after everybody in the team has made their point around a particular question. And then you would tell the group, I want to step outside of my role as the facilitator and I want to provide some input if it hasn't been received by the participants so far. So it's a way of switching hats, so to speak, between a leader hat and a facilitator hat, but people know when you're doing that. And ideally, if you've provided context for your team, and if you had a great conversation, and you have a great team, honestly, you're hardly ever going to have to step in with contact. So that's three guidelines. One is detachment, setting parameters, and the third is having an agreement about when you step inside of the facilitation role. Use these three guidelines and I guarantee you people will be less confused and be more effective as a team. Thank you for joining us today. Take care. Bye-bye.